That's, bands with headbands. It's an alternative to hair oh. clipper men. It's like you push it back and you wear a head, big headband. Mm -hmm. Then it's then it's that one thing you comb it all over. Like, um, Stand by. Uh, they roll pack it. Yeah. Back. Monitor right here. And Jim, if What's you want to watch that? Okay. That night, no, that comedy see. routine, he grabbed all his hair and he <laughs> held it all. Sure. Yes, I am. Sure. Just uh, just the way that not uh, they to let everybody else do it. You know, they just sort of do their own thing. I respect that. They didn't go to college. <laughs> they didn't go to college. Nirvana. Nirvana. Love that. Good for you. What kind of music do you listen to? I usually listen to pop music. Did you know that they have a new album out? Yeah. I haven't heard of that. Could you take this home and listen to it and then come back tomorrow at the same time and tell me what you did? Sure. All right. Yeah, no problem. Sure. I work here, so I'm here every day. Sure. Where is this college? Uh, St. John's. Tell me how did you like it in Utah. Oh, it was great. It was really good. So a very similar to the first album. And I got a couple songs that I've been playing on the radio. I'm going to be hits. So third track. It's called Shape Box. I'll probably be on TV or something. And I like the uh, <laughs> This guy should work for David Yeff and Company. I could listen to, and I enjoyed the, the music too. Killer B. Run out Freddy Krueger. A lot of the lyrics I thought were just thrown in. I mean, I, they could have deeper meaning, and I tried to really analyze them. But some of these lyrics just seem like. I think if I was stolen when I listened to it, I'd do that. That's it. <laughs> I'm in college. It's target marketing. <laughs> oh. I prefer the beginning part of the album, especially Ravens. That's just like, uh, I think they just, they want controversy with that song, because all it is, there's no real meaning to it, I thought, other than it was just really uh, blatant and, and loud. The drum was really good, uh, Reet Man was really good, and Crap Shoe Box was excellent. Hey, potential sales. All of that high tempo, this is the Garrett album, all of them are great. And then they mellow all around the middle, then at the end, it hypes you back up again. All right. Who are the dogs? I think they should open the sense person. Francis Farmer and Hyper Run and Seattle are both so different. I don't know who Francis Farmer is. Francis Farmer was a wolf that man. I would enjoy it more. If I was stoned. They have the first album, they'll enjoy this one. It was pretty good. It's not what I usually listen to, but I listen to it. Can't please everybody. Bye. All right. My man. It's upside down. Hmm. That's the people, you know. Everybody's got an asshole and everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> I wonder what my mom thinks of that record. I haven't asked her. Oh, it's nice. It's good. It's very good. It's good. It's yeah. very good, Chris. Now I'm going to ask you some MTV questions about the piece that we just... Of nationalism and God are perfectly cohesive. <laughs> okay, I can start any time. <laughs> Look at that pillar. I... Fuzzy. Remember rail? Yeah. <laughs> These first questions are about that, uh, about that um, thing that we just saw. Three out of eight people we approached said they never heard of Nirvana. What do you think of that? They must be living in a cave. They don't read music. Like. <laughs> they have forsaken the age of information. They are to be eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the people who um, responded uh, to the song Rape Me said they were offended by it in some way or that they couldn't understand it. Could you explain the meaning of the song to perhaps clear up? Mm. I think they... Well, we're the cover boys of about 10 different magazines this month. 
And in every one of those magazines, we explain it pretty, pretty good. It's an anti, let me repeat that, anti-rape song. Um, I don't know, I just thought, I got tired of people thinking, trying to put too much meaning into my lyrics, you know, as being too, uh, not making enough sense, you know. So I decided uh, to be really blunt and bold. So, and I, I just thought that it's kind of a funny just reward for a person who rapes like a guy, like a mean asshole who rapes a woman, violates her, and then he goes into jail and gets raped, you know? Yeah. I, think, I think it's kind of a justice in a way. Maybe being offended and not understanding it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, well that's, I mean obviously the, the only reason they were offended because they obviously thought the song was like this, mm -hmm. apparently took it as a, you know, macho, you know, I don't know, in, in some weird way, I mean I don't exactly watching, know how you would... They've been programmed by too many beer commercials. Or yeah, I mean I don't really know how you would misunderstand something like that. I thought we've made our stance on rape clear within the last year and a half, you know? Yeah, but most anyone who knows about us would probably know that we are pretty much anti-rape right. at this point, you know? But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, that, you'd think that would be clear, but I guess the, these were people who didn't know anything about you and are just, like, listening to a record, you know? Like, if that mm -hmm. song all of a sudden starts... I mean, you've, you've always... I mean, you had trouble with Saturday Night Live, right? I mean, trying to get that song yeah. played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w why is that? If it's just this straightforward anti-rape song, why are they having a problem with it? Maybe you shouldn't be talking about it. It's, like, taboo, you know? Daddy's bonking the little stepchild. I mean, we don't talk about that here. No. What's no. controversial about an, an anti-rape song, basically? I mean, I guess it's the way. It's the nature of the... the ta it's a taboo, you know? A taboo subject. Yeah. So what do you think of this guy, this... the reaction to the album from the, from the, the Vox Populi? Yeah. They seemed mm -hmm. to like it, didn't they? I would have rather taken it to a, a rock and roll show or something, you know? Right. Or, uh, instead of just like college students. Just random yeah. college students who may or may not listen to rock music. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't think they listen to our music anyhow, so. What about the college charts? <sighs> oh yeah, weren't we on the college charts? College evolved into alternative. It started with college, didn't it? What do we know? We never went to we college. Never went to college. <laughs> <laughs> What's college like? Um, there girls and frat boy parties. That's pretty scary. We played at a lot of college parties. <laughs> I know. We, used, we, we practically went to the Evergreen State College. I, mean, I know. We, just we to lived all... there. <laughs> went there every weekend. And every, no one studied, that's for sure. <laughs> Liberal Arts College. They have a class there which you can follow around the Grateful Dead and get a credit for it. You could work at a record label and get a credit for it. Yeah. yeah. They didn't have a football team. Kind of a liberal college. Everyone likes to go there. Is that where, that's where uh, Calvin Johnson went. Yeah. Stuff like that. Matt yeah. Groening went there. Yeah. yeah. Linda Berry, Bruce Pavitt. Modern day pop geniuses. Pear, Bernstein. Oh, really? Yeah. Pear did? Yeah, Pear went there. He's babysitting my child right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy. <laughs> when he's got it together. He's with his mom though. Oh good. Oh good. Now good. Yeah, we've noticed actually all the all the interns that we, we had this policy at Spin at one point that we weren't gonna hire any more interns that went to college because they were completely clueless. The more college <laughs> experience they had. You know what I mean? It's like high school dropouts are the only ones who know how to operate a Xerox machine. <laughs> I don't know. We yes, okay. educated our sales on the street. Okay, um, more MTV questions about your album, In Utero. Um, what, did you, what kind of album did you deliberately set out to make in, with In Utero as opposed to what you did with Nevermind in reaction to it or mm. in terms of specifically, specifically in, I guess in terms of the sound of it? Was there any... Well, we had an idea of a, of a sound that we've been wanting for a long time, you know, because of Steve Albini's production from a lot of other bands like Breeders and the Pixies and stuff like that. You know those those yeah. bands. You never heard of them? No. Um, and um, it's just it's just that sound that we really like, and we thought that that sounded so natural and real, and it had a, it has a really beautiful ambience to it. So uh, that's why we chose it. 
Um, uh, there was a review I just read of it that said it sounded like you set out to make the last punk rock record and ended up making what sounded like the first punk rock record. Mm. We were out to commit commercial suicide. Yeah. What else were we out to do? Uh, to, career to suicide? To pee off our A&R man. Uh, we didn't care what was on the record. We just wanted to put just, out a raunchy record. Just do that. To be there's controversial. Other, yeah, there's other, just for controversy's sake, I just like that person said on on that clip. We want comfort. We want confrontation. We like stressing everybody out, our management and <laughs> label and ourselves. <laughs> We're, we feed off it. It's some dysfunction we have. Man, <sighs> the music business is nothing like the TV business, I realized. That's good. Being on Saturday Night Live yesterday. Yeah. Being around that. Oh, it's chaotic. In what way is it more? Is TV even worse? Ooh. Oh God, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine working in TV. Because more people are addicted to TV than they are music. Yeah, that's yeah. probably true. So There's so much pressure. Um, so, were you happy with? Um, I mean, you know, well, the the sound that our that I'll be in got. I mean, was it the drum? The drum right sound away. Yeah. yeah. It, as soon as we started, it, the first song that we recorded, we listened back to it and said, okay, yeah, that's his sound. That's what we wanted. You know. Which isn't, I mean, it is his sound. It's a trademark sound, but it's something that I personally have had in my head ever since I've been in a band. Ever since we've had this band going, I've wanted that kind of a sound because it sounds so natural and real. And, uh, you know, technology nowadays, 99% of all studios sound too, you know, digital. Digital, you know. And, yeah, that's definitely not Steve, is it? Yeah, so he used, you know, a lot of... Um, old analog equipment and a lot of microphones, like quadruple the amount of microphones that, nor that people normally use. Yeah. We kind of fit into his work ethic too because we had all the songs down, almost all the songs down. We just went yeah. in there and knocked them out because I've heard stories from other bands like if you don't get the song down in three takes, it's like forget it, don't even do it. Hard ass, cracking his whip. How was he to work with? Did you get along with him? He was Come great. On. It, on, the, on the record it says recorded by doesn't say produced well, by. That's the ethic. He's like Mr. Ethic. That's his thing. That's yeah. What he's yeah, yeah, but we gave him two million dollars. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. <laughs> but money talks. How did then did that um, that whole controversy arose at the point you know when you were done with the record and you know apparent it, it was reported widely that he yeah. said or I don't know people were just clamoring for something they just yeah. they just jumped on specu it was just speculation and they blew it out of proportion and like for an establishment magazine like Newsweek to just report on something so sketchy full like a page and a half it was just amazing I couldn't believe it then I started flipping through other stories about the Mideast and, and whatever I'm like god how much credibility do these things have and then <laughs> sure enough I bird, bottom of the birdcage I had kind of the same <laughs> I had kind of the same reaction too. It's like if something like this could be so wrong, then what does it say for yeah. the rest of the stories? That I you mean, there was there was some truth. I mean, there was a little bit of friction in the way. It there was there was confusion for about a month or so uh -huh. after we brought the tape home. We listened to it. We couldn't we couldn't tell what was wrong with it. There was something wrong. It just didn't hit us like our other recordings had, and. Um, it just took us a while to figure out that the vocals weren't loud enough. That's basically what the problem was. The bass was really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Vocals. That's all we did. So we fixed it in mastering. Right. Know, just EQ'd it a little bit different. Right. And remixed two songs. Right. Um, I, I actually, um, there was, um, I was talking to the guys in Earth Overkill. They said their trick with getting, when they, he produced that um, the Supersonic Storybook. All right. That one. He said um, they would distract him, and when he turned his back on the console, they'd push the vocal faders out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was one time when I walked out of the room to slam the door, yeah. and then I came back in and, and uh, got my way. Threw a star fit for about 10 minutes. That's all it took. I did that at a hot dog stand today. Really? You didn't get the right hot dog. <laughs> Too much mustard. Um, Setless Apprentice is apparently one of the first songs that you guys have sort of more fully collaborated on than yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. Is that a, sort of a direction you'd like to take further in the future? Or? Hell yes. It takes the pressure off of me. Um, Dave came up with the drum beat, and we just built the song off of the drum. 
And the riff, yeah. yeah. He came up with the drum beat and then he showed me the riff, you know? And it was really simple and, and we thought, well, this this could work. And and then I was thinking, mm, this is kind of bonehead. And then, and then I thought, well, we'll work on it. And then and it turned out great. And now I'm excited about it because now we can write together even more. Yeah. You know, we're really passive aggressive people. I don't like to, you know, complain to each other very often. And that's probably why we survived. We should go into <laughs> therapy, all of us. Sit down with this therapist. No what way. We should just bitch about each other in, in articles, you know, separately. Yeah, read the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> read the book, I know. Read yeah. The book. yeah. I didn't bitch about anybody. Huh? Thanks, I didn't bitch Chris. about anybody. You didn't? No. Oh, I guess you're right. I did a lot of bitching. I can't even finish that what? book. I, I really can't even finish what? it. It's just like, oh god. I, hate I read it last night. I so learned a lot from today. that book. Yeah. <laughs> you just I learned back. a lot from almost, you know, the first two chapters mm -hmm. that I should just shut up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, is it weird to read about your life in totally. It's like a, it yeah. seems like a violation. Like, who needs to know what I was like really when I was is. a child, you know? And our lives are like hamburgers for uh, B. Dalton and Doubleday. And then <laughs> they're the fry cooks dishing out the slop. It was, it, I mean, in terms of... It's a good book. Yeah, I thought it's so It's well too. written. Very well written and yeah. like extremely thorough, more so than most band biographies. Tell me about it. And extremely <laughs> honest, you know, extremely, yeah. you guys were extremely open and honest, which is... Do, do you, well, sometimes that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, um, I mean, do, do you hope that maybe it will help diffuse some of the sort of negative rumor mongering and things like that? Was that sort of one of the one of the motivations for doing it in the first place? Well, better well, have a, a biography come out with someone that you're cooperating with than someone who just wants to yeah, like those make other you look witches. like a piece of shit. Um, yeah, but not you know people don't buy rock books very often. It's not a very large selling market, you know. So. I don't know. The majority of people that buy, you know, probably three million people that bought our record last year only knew about us from maybe watching us on Saturday Night Live and hearing us on the AOR radio station, you know. Or seeing the video or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, especially. <laughs> I forgot about well, that. On MTV? Yeah. Music television? And so I, I don't know. I, I don't buy rock books myself. I'm not that interested in hearing details of, of my favorite rock bands and uh, I mean so for the people that do read it they will get a better view on it I'm sure but at, at the same time it's gonna put I mean you know, there's not gonna be the it seems to me that it's so thorough and complete and honest that there's not much room for any like rumors to be <laughs> circulating around anymore because it's like everybody sort of it put, it's, you, know, you know what I mean <laughs> there'll always well, be rumors going around about okay. something or another I'm convinced of that yeah. I already know, um, I don't know, you remember the P kid in high school or grade school that always got, was always the scapegoat. I think we're one of those bands, we're the P band. We got you caught know? jerking off. In the back. <laughs> <laughs> got caught jerking off. What, what, what do you think? Yeah, everybody else does it, what, but where do you think? still crucify that one. But not kid. in school. <laughs> what do you think provokes that sort of, you know, and what's in your band or your music or your personalities that provokes that kind of reaction from? We just, um, we don't think before we speak. <laughs> or we're reactionary ourselves. We hear something, blah, 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 go off right on it. Or maybe we just don't want to play MTV softball or something. We only fit in. So. Um. <laughs> Let's see. I'm My gonna... favorite was when the whole MTV controversy about when we were playing the, mu the the awards last year when we couldn't play Rape Me, and so we um, we had this interview later on, and and Dave decided to tell the story about it to MTV <laughs> via videotape. Like they're gonna show. No, no. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I didn't even catch it until like weeks later. Like, oh yeah, I guess they probably wouldn't play that. <laughs> Um, okay, then my next question on this list of questions here is, um, why did you perform at the New Music Seminar this year? That wasn't supposed to be a part of the New Music Seminar, I don't believe. Yeah. We just wanted to play a show. Um, 
So, you know, so, for, well, for all these little bands that, up and coming bands that were playing that night, wouldn't have an audience. <laughs> we're vicious. Yeah. They're on our fucking turf, man. Yeah. We didn't really think of that. Normally we would think of stuff like that. We are kind of considerate in that way. And, and it kind of bummed me out when I realized that. Can I smoke on television? Um, but I don't know. I guess it was just a way of saying that we're not um, dead. Proof of your existence. Yeah. yeah. It was some kind of marketing plan or something. <laughs> yeah. We participated in. I um, thought I had a good time myself. Yeah, it was a good too. show. Yeah, and we played acoustic for the first time. Mm -hmm. Right. And we had one day before we left to, to practice our acoustic set, which explains why it sucked so bad. <laughs> you think it sucked? I think a lot of people thought it sucked. I didn't I didn't hate it that much, but I didn't see it. What about all those frat boys writhing on top of each other in the front row. Yeah, you? and yelling and talking. <laughs> they said it rocked. Is that something you're going to keep doing? With, uh, well, I don't think we're going to do like this Led Zeppelin tradition of like sit down after an hour's worth of playing electric and then do an acoustic set. I think we'll just like go back and forth, like play acoustic song, play a bunch of rock songs, play another acoustic song. Yeah. Right. Probably be easier that way. Yeah. And you're going to... Um, Tour with an, another guitarist. Yeah, again. Pat well, Smear. Right. Um, what? Uh, why did you decide to do that to add a fourth guitarist? Because um, I suffer from um, I suffer from mental blocks. <laughs> I have short-term memory loss. I forget the words. Too much concentration on remembering those three chords and, and the words, and maybe having a little bit of participation with the crowd. You know. Just too much for me, so I got a second guitar player. That's really good. Like yeah, Pat picked up just just like that. We've only practiced like six times, and we could play a show right now. If we he's got a lot to. of spirit too. Even if and he's really he's really good. He's got a lot of finesse and feel to what he plays, but he's got a lot of spirit. Even if he's yeah. a really terrible guitar player, just the spirit alone is enough for me. And, and the punk cred. Yeah. Yeah, right, oh yeah, that's <sighs> it. Yeah, he used to be in the Germs. Right. That's why. That's why. You and we, when we were like rehearsing the other night, and I think it's like his guitar went out, and it was just like, I'm spoiled now. It doesn't sound as big or th yeah. thick anymore, so now it's, it's too late. Does we're he mostly double rhythm parts, or, or? Yeah, he or, basically just does the yeah. rhythms, yeah. Mm -hmm. I should get him to start playing the solos, because I can't remember them. Well, you get in the tour, you'll remember them. Yeah, halfway through. Halfway, halfway through. through. Just crank up some weird effect, like I'll get Kelly to give you a quick guitar refresher course. Yeah. She broke a string last <laughs> night. I felt so sorry for her. Oh, yeah. She only plays two when she broke one. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, on Francis Farmer, Kurt sings, I miss the comfort in being sad. Is this regarding the price you pay for fame? No. That's a ridiculous question. <laughs> sorry. No. I just, I, that doesn't... I don't know, that was just a line that I picked out of a poetry book that, I, that I'd written. I mean, I mean out, of, out of some of my poetry, yeah. you know. That's her. What, uh, so, so, um... Oh, hi. How, um, t let's talk about the new video. Anton Corbin directed it, I guess. What, um, how did you decide to hook up with him? He seems kind of a surprising we choice. We did a photo you. session with uh -huh. him, and he's such a laid-back guy, really talented, really admired his work. So let's do a video with Anton Corbin. Worked out great. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was the funnest and easiest video we've ever done. Well, no, I guess... In Bloom was even easier. Yeah, well, we only had like four takes. We did four takes. Had to listen to the song four times. Right. It was great. This time it took a little bit longer, but it was just so easy, and he had everything prepared. It was all, you know, in, in a script. And did you? How much? Because I know you've been pretty involved in the, you know, creative input into the videos before. Did you work the same way this time, or was it more? Was he more of a director type? No, it was. No, we came up with. Well, I don't want to take all the credit, but 
I came up with most of the visuals. And um, what's really kind of sad about it is that Kevin Kerslake, who's done our last two videos, or three, 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 three um, him and I had a lot of conversations over the phone about these visuals that I had for this video, and he feels that a lot of them were his. A lot of them were his ideas, and they weren't. I swear to God, uh -huh. I'll swear on a Bible. And now we're we've had a kind of a falling out with him. And it's just too bad. Oh, okay. Do you swear that those were your ideas? I absolutely do. So help you God. All right. There you have it. Proof positive. This is actually this is Qaddafi's green book. It's not the Bible. No, it is the Bible. Why are you carrying around the Bible? In your this guy gave it to me on the street today. Oh yeah. I just go talking about an hour because see, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Savior. <laughs> when I die, I'm going to heaven for all eternity. The streets will be paved with gold. Oh, nice if you form. missed limbs, you will grow new ones. If you are blind, <laughs> you will see. You will have a Pontiac in the <laughs> garage. You will all look like Pharaoh Fawcett majors. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of gender. Well, I was, uh, I was driving here from Ohio, and um, we're playing, like, I was listening to, the, you know, just sort of, like, scanning the radio dial, and like, the guy comes to, comes to the end of... Um, they were playing, I guess, the end of Heart Shaped Box. And the guy said, that was Heart Shaped Box from the new Nirvana album, In Utero. Before that, Santana, Black Magic Woman. And before that, the Moody Blues. Was, Weird. Uh, Every time I've heard it on the radio, they played the Rolling Stones. Really? Four times. Four you times, know, times in a row. Because it's a computer. computer but it's a different Rolling Stones song. Mm -hmm. I don't understand They that. played... Uh, we're, we're classic rock already? Already. Yeah. It, it, we don't have our weird. name on the classic rock fan in Seattle. There's this van that has all these, it says Pearl Jam, but I didn't see Nirvana on it. It's like this Astro van that they take to concerts. Bummer. We hmm. saw it at the Aerosmith show. She didn't have Arnie. Oh, that's weird. It, it, it's just, a, it, do, do you um, experience ever like kind of a, a weird sense of dislocation and being juxtaposed with these other things or, you know, like what? It's all entertainment. <laughs> it's all points and ratings and unit shifting. And what that entails about your audience, yeah. Or the kind of people that listen to your records. Mm, it's just pretty much what they're fed, you know what I mean? It's like the president of Viacom, he wants to be the number one entertainment conglomerate. Not number four, not number three, but number one. It doesn't matter what the quality of the programming is, it's just what share of the market they control. It's really sick. I think if they played like Daniel Johnson between Santana and the Moody Blues, that like Daniel could sell like two Hell million records? No. <laughs> You wish. Yeah. Sure. Sure. If you can, if you can cram garbage like poison down people's throats, why not Daniel Johnson? Daniel <laughs> Johnson than poison. <laughs> he should be to the '90s with the Maharishi Yogi. The Ramones the should have had ten top ten singles by now. You know. Does in in, in any sense does the success of, of your band um, make that more more of a possibility now? I haven't that, seen it. Do you think it has had any positive effect on radio or? Mm, no. It's, it's the same exact thing as New Wave. I've said this a million times. It's just like, you know, like punk bands turned into New Wave bands, becoming more commercially acceptable to be able to get on TV and radio. Yeah. The only alternative bands that I see on Alternative Nation are, you know, it, that close to Bon Jovi, and right. so are we. You know, so we have no reason to be griping about it, but I guess it just I am. comes naturally. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of depressing. Why no, it, it has. I mean, it's it's sure. I mean, I think a consciousness and an overall consciousness, you know, being more environmentally aware and stuff like that. You know, it, it, sure. I I'm I have nothing against MTV, really. Believe me. <laughs> It's, it's, or is that Bible? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really, it's, I think it's progressed in the last couple of years, sure. But not as much as I'd like it to, you know, I like, we, we like quick change, you know. Sure. We, we have a short attention span. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Days don't confuse. 
Um, Anarchist, right. But but it is better. I mean, I you know, for me to have people, even if I don't like the band, a band's music, maybe someone like um, Eddie Vedder as a person up yeah. there that people are, are sort of you know looking as role models or whatever, mm -hmm. just because you know, it, it, even if the music isn't the most progressive thing, at least it seems like they they're coming from a different. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's where it starts. You know what? You know, cruising down Sunset Boulevard on your Harley and guzzling Jack Daniels. I mean, what's that about? We're there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did uh, how did you come up with the title in utero? And what what is that? Does it have a specific meaning, or is it meant to be? It just kind of went in conjunction with the, the artwork. You know. Mm -hmm. just, Sounded nice. The artwork came first. Yeah. And, and then the title. Yeah. And that was. Did you come up with the artwork, or was it, you know? Yeah, I came up with. I put together. I'd been collecting all these little rubber fetuses and things like that. I've just always been kind of obsessed with birth and death and stuff like that. I'm not. Um, I'm not a death rocker. But, and, and I don't wear black, but sometimes I like to collect weird things like that. And so I arranged them all together and bought a bunch of flowers and had Charles Peterson take the picture of it. And uh, I don't know. At one point you're going to call it, I hate myself and I want to die. Yeah. And then it was verse, course, verse. Those are fine titles, but just like Rate Me, you know, the title itself confuses people. People would take it too literally. They think we were being serious because no one sees the funny side of us hardly. You know, every picture, you know, if we take a photo shoot, you know, we may smile or make goofy faces 90% of the time. And if we frown for three seconds, they'll use those three second shots, you know. And it's just, I just n have noticed this image of us as being a serious, you know, angry, pissed off band. Right. You know, so. That's the, that, you think that's the image that people want to have of you rather than? I don't know if they want that or if it's just turned out that way. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, can I have some more decaf coffee? There's a cup right there. Could I have a cup of caffeinated coffee? Sure. There's a cup right there. You can reuse it. Thanks. All right. Would you like sugar? We were going to have a, the album was going to be called uh, I Hate Myself, I Want to Die, Jack of Orkian cover. <laughs> With a gas mask. I mean, that's three wearing gas masks. Like, we're resisting you, but what you're doing is all right. So um, what kind of a tour are you, are you guys playing? I mean, what kind of places are you, are you going to try to play? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know. I think Do they're going to be about 8,000, six, 8,000 seaters. We're gonna play the Arizona State Fair. Excited about that. Yeah. What we're not sure if people are gonna show up to our shows yet, so. Yeah, so we're playing it safe. We're gonna play it at the 4-H tent. <laughs> <laughs> you know that the uh, PETA was picketing the gay rodeo in Enumclaw, Washington, because of the you know, cruelty to animals. Like this bull busted its leg and it was destroyed, they said. There are people out there, PETA people says, gays, yes, rodeo, no. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like PETA. When, when will this tour start? Mid-October. Mid-October. Yeah. And go through till the end of time. Oh, not really, till about the end of December. Yeah. And then we'll probably do a European <clears throat> deal and then do all the weirdo shows like Australia, Japan, maybe. I want to play Jerusalem. OK. Where else? Istanbul, Constantinople, here I come. And then, um... The police did something like that a long wow. time ago. They tore it down there. Athens, it'd be neat. George. Is it weird not be, being able to play, like, club shows anymore? Or, I mean, is that a drag at all? No, uh, we can still do it. Yeah, unannounced kind of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't seem to have the same vibe anymore. Really? In what way I don't is understand it? why. I couldn't figure it out. We played at the, the Crocodile. Remember that show? People just people like to just stand and watch now. Yeah, they, like we're because all the scenes just got in. All the scenes well, it's just a different about. scene. It's you know we haven't been in that scene for years, for a few years now, and it's a different breed of people. I mean, in, in the Seattle's generation has moved up. Yeah. And 
into the ranks of turning 21, and they don't seem to have the same spirit as they did in Seattle a few years ago. Do you think it's it's the sir? Thank you. Thank you. Do you think it's the, that the people have changed, or maybe they're just in general people's attitudes towards your band has maybe changed? I think they probably didn't Both. want to show, you know, they probably didn't want to show how much they liked us to be cool. I would have done the same thing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was all right. When we were fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> I was dancing around at the Scream show. Were you really? And Pete dedicated a song to me. I was so touched. Oh, it was really good. Then you see those little punk rockers up front, and they got in trouble with the bouncers, and it's me and Mark Arm, and some other people got in a big scuffle with them. <laughs> Throwing ice cubes at the bouncers, get the heck out of here. And they backed down, it was neat. <laughs> I love pushing bouncers, getting them kicked out of places. Out of it's so here. great. Does it, is it, um, it feel good to actually be like a working band with, with, with something out and, and going on tour again, you know, since it seems like. It seemed like we were always working. Well, I know, but it, there was a period of, well, you know, just. You know, bad press and you know. Oh, all that, that, period. that period. Yeah. Read about it in the book. Yeah. That's a period, all right. But that's. I, mean, I got my period. <clears throat> but that's kind of over, it seems like, over now and things are. Yeah, because like, we have a new record out. Yeah. And, um, and the reaction to it so far seems to be really great. I mean, I've seen nothing but, but really good reviews. Except in Newsweek. A Newsweek? Newsweek. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like they news were going to get rag. I read some good things in Newsweek. I think that same issue. I'll give him that. Because I remember you talking about, uh, you, you've talked about a couple times about worried about maybe a, kind of a backlash for this record, you know, people just sort of hating it because they're supposed to rather than responding to it as a record, which doesn't seem to be happening so far mm. in any case. Well, at least they're not I doing what they're supposed to. Never mind. <laughs> Go on. Oh, no, no, no. Did you say something? No, I thought something. No. We'll never know. Don't, Don't hurt anything. yourself. <laughs> um, okay, I guess you have like a, a secret track on the No Alternative record, which will be out by the time this airs, apparently, so it's supposed to be okay do to we? talk about secret? it. Do we? Secret? We do? That's what it says here. I don't know. You don't? What's the all no alternative record? Is that the AIDS? That's the, the AIDS right, um, benefit right. thing. Oh, you know, how come it's secret? Alternative stuff. I it's not a secret was, anymore. I thought we were going to put it out like everybody else. I, I was told that it was... Uh, Why? Because who else is on the record? I, I don't I, As far as, I mean, lots of people. You know, Soul Asylum, Soundgarden. And our record's secret. Sonic Youth, Readers. Mm. I don't know. It's our secret. It's, it's not it's fake jewelry. I don't know why it's, it's real jewelry. Because right. yeah. people think yeah. we're, we're condoning AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> AIDS is good. Oh, and at that gay rodeo, there was this uh, person, a Christian, across the street with a big sign that said, Sodomites, okay. do you have AIDS yet? Can you believe that? Jesus. What a sickle. He's Christian. That's all right. There's no reason to go kick his ass. It's, you know, Sodomites. Anyway, I guess part of this is going to air on when they do a special on the No Alternative album when it comes out. Oh. So everyone will know about the song then, so it's not a secret. So we start going on, oh, it's just I a think secret. you I guess it's condoms. Not, it's not secret on the album, it's just we're not, uh, it's before the album comes out. I don't know. No one's supposed to know or something. I don't know. But There's anyway, our manager so, over there. <laughs> hey, John Silva, come here. <laughs> But anyway, I'm not asking about why it's He briefed us on like everything that. but that question, I'm asking too. About, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking about the, uh, the song on it. What's it. What was it from? Is it an outtake or a... Outtake. It's an outtake. I hate myself. I want to... No, 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 no verse, chorus, verse. Verse, chorus, verse. It's a really old song. song. But wait, what's it supposed to be called? No, it's sappy. No, it's I called, don't know. It's sappy, though. Yeah. It's one of the songs that we've been trying to record for... Every Since record. we've been a band, yeah. every time we've went into the studio, we've tried to record the song, and it sucked every time. It's sappy, right? What well, didn't it it suck, but it just it wasn't. Yeah, it sucked, and this time it just almost didn't. <laughs> it was, so. Oh yeah, it, it sucked every time. It, it barely, barely sucked yeah, this barely time. Sucked. Barely. So that's an old song too. I'm assuming they just approached you and asked you to contribute something, and you said, "Yeah." Here's a song from the in the '80s. <laughs> you wrote that song in the '80s, Curry. <sighs> 
What period were you in? Shut Third up. period, just before lunch. Third period. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I'm supposed to ask some aid, some general AIDS questions. Do you think uh, contributing to something like this, uh, that m music can be used as a way to educate people about AIDS? I, you know, as long as it raises money for like uh, treatment and hospices and things that's what really turned me on that it helped people who were suffering you know as far as information I mean I get so much information I don't even speak for myself I I don't even know what the heck's going the on. record isn't gonna give you any information right yeah the money will there's so many theories out there is HIV even is it lead having to anything to do yeah, with that it it's is. just really hard so I guess the best thing we can do is help people who are suffering from it Um, I guess, Chris, uh, in, in some of the recent interviews, you've been tr uh, tried to steer away from political subjects so as not to be kind of pigeonholed as the political handed. one. Or, yeah. Or There's just no reason to just totally dwell on it because it's just, I'm a bass player in a rock and roll band and just go on and on and on about things. And you can talk all you want, but I think the main thing is you guys should be doing things. And that's not for me, that's for everybody, you know, just, you know, oh, I talk about things in the media, and yeah, then just go it's, home it's and much, drink beer. It's, it's, like, it's <laughs> much more effective to, to do a, a benefit for Bosnian rape victims and come up with how much money did we make for that, you know? 55 grand. You know, I mean, that, that makes way more of an yeah. impact than talking about it. And, and we got this uh, organization called the Balkan Women's Aid Fund. And uh, maybe you can flash the address and you can send donations too. And we're working with women's groups in Croatia and Austria and Hungary and Serbia mm -hmm. and, uh, and in Bosnia Herzegovina. So we don't have any like nationalist ties whatsoever because a lot of these women are just caught in the middle of it all, women and children. So um, just plugging away at that still, having given up and take advantage of the media and just mention the address and if people want information they can write and I'll send them information back but just harp away on things over and over again I think people lose interest you know it could be like we are the world we could be on stage celebrating famine in uh, Africa <laughs> you know we are the world and there's kids that they were doing that just totally starving to death I mean, it's, it's gross oh. you, you went over to Bosnia I went to Croatia. Oh, I didn't to go to Bosnia. Okay. No way. I wasn't that. So Bosnia, yeah. I wouldn't do that for Bob Guccione Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, how much have we? Because I'm kind of, you know, there aren't that many more questions I want to ask on this list. Are we? Are we running out of time, or how are we doing on time? Keep going. I know keep going, but I mean, yeah, what I'm saying is I'm running out of, I mean, I don't, there's some of this. Okay, Carol's on her way out. Okay, good. Some of this stuff. <coughs> I just don't want to ask some of this stuff. Hi, sorry. Here, Kurt. Um, you asked Dave about the Scream shows he did. Okay. And Kurt's work on the Melvin's album. Okay, we'll do that. And then just these ticket questions and violence. Okay. You got them on yours. Yeah, I got him on the line, right. Thanks. Thanks. Dave. Well? Let's talk about the... Okay. Um, you did some uh, scream shows mm -hmm. over the summer, I guess. Yes. Reunited. Yes. Thank you. For a while. How was that? Great. <laughs> <laughs> barely made it back in time for us yeah. to practice. I know, I barely Still made it back in time for us to practice. We just got back together to do some shows. Just felt like playing and it was fun. And yeah, there's some old stuff that was being re-released on Discord. Right. So, just thought we'd do it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was good to play, you know, in smaller places without a hoopla. Yeah. So that was nice. You came back in shape on the drums. Came back, came I was in shape. It was nice. Cut your chops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cut my chops like, down. Hey, like, Tape the cymbals. <laughs> Tape the cymbals, yeah. Yeah, we make him tape the cymbals in practice now. It kills our ears. Really? And we turn down in practice. And guess what? You can hear the vocals now. Wasn't that amazing? It's not like, ah, not too loud. Ah, like, God damn it. 
Um, okay, and Kurt, you uh, you produced the Melvin's new album. I produced a few songs. Okay. I think like six tracks. I guess you can call it producing. I really don't know what that term means. What, what, <laughs> what, what did it entail for you? A lot of sleeping on the couch, <laughs> waiting for them to write songs. <laughs> um, it worked out pretty good, though. I mean, I had a few kind of stupid ideas. Like, we, I got a bunch of plywood and put it down on the floor for an ambience and used a lot of microphones, tried to steal some of Albini's techniques. And um, uh, what else did we do? We enclosed Buzz's cabinet into a box. Didn't make a bit of difference. Stuff like that, you know? yeah. But, but it, you know, I, I like the record now. Now that I've heard it, it's finished. I, yeah. I just saw their video the other day. I hope it's played on this station because it's really funny. I'm feeding back. Sorry. Mm. Um. So yeah. Cool. And now I'm supposed to ask you about um. This is these are other special sections they're doing. This one, um, this is a spot that's going to be on what. Uh, uh, our uh, bands charge ticket prices, basically. This ah, like we had this question. Ticket prices. First question is, what do, what do you think of artists who do charge anywhere between fifty to seventy five dollars for tickets? There are who charges charge that, that much, much money? Who does Apparently. that? Madonna. Madonna. How does? much do we charge a ticket, John? Yeah, but that's like a burlesque show. It's a big production. Twenty uh, seven. Twelve. You can speak. Three? Is that twelve or twenty one? 17 to 18 bucks a ticket? Wow. Madonna charges $50? Apparently. 50 to 75. Madonna yeah. wears Madonna wears fur too. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. We were talking about, boy, we should charge $25 and really milk it. Yeah. Yeah. Really take them for all they got. If they want to come, let's see how bad they really want to see the band play. So, um, 17, we charge $17. So, what Fugazi's what you... playing tonight, they're charging five. Six. So how does that make you feel? Week <laughs> exploited. Yep. See, they go from five to six to seven <laughs> to eight. Pretty soon, it's all over, man. Was well, inflation? What with the ticket master charge and? Um, so, what do you think of the price you charge for your concert? Is the next question. Mm. Seventeen to eighteen. <laughs> what do we think of it? Uh, I guess we make enough money. God, if we had to pay for every show we played on tour, mm. never mind. I don't know. Production costs are so astronomical. It's amazing. You got to pay all these people, and the band always gets it in the end. The band has to, has to pay for everything. That's a, the we one. We make the least amount of money. How much do you see of the? This says thirty odd dollars you charge for one ticket, but let's say seventeen or eighteen dollars you pay you charge for one ticket. John, <laughs> we don't even know. Sure, huh? Twenty-five percent. Is that after your cost? And then, and then. Cool. <laughs> so, so say if it's twenty dollars, we see five dollars of the twenty dollars, and that's you know then the, you have to pay for your the cost of the touring with that. Interesting. Um, okay, that's that. No, that. we make that five dollars. That's in our pocket, clear, right? No. Yeah, twenty-five percent. You work on about twenty-five percent net. Oh, oh net. Oh, okay. And then you have to split it three ways. <laughs> They right, dollar seventy-five a piece for every show, <laughs> uh, for every person. So, so if there's eight thousand people, you made ten grand that night. I didn't go to college. That's not bad money. Ten grand a night. Gee, that's pretty good. Let's play more. Shows. I never think about that. <laughs> Let's go out there and play. But we're not rich or anything. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty good money. I'm going to go out and buy something today. I feel guilty about it. <laughs> Cheapness isn't bred me. OK, the next special section is on violence. We're doing a special on violence, I guess. Violence is bad. <laughs> Wait till oh, we don't want to talk. You know, we just want people to come to our shows and have a good time. I mean, all these issues and stuff, I, we don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> Do you think teen violence is a big problem in today's society? <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't they have metal detectors at school for guns now? No, it's not like. What do you mean, though? What Joke. do I mean? What do you mean? Hey. <laughs> Ronnie Coker and. Joe Stutter are gonna have a fight after school. Like, Ooh, let's fight, go. Fight, fight. Now it's like a shootout in the hall. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. Right. I've got some mace right here. Well, I'll get that. 
is, is, uh, so this is my security guard. You know, this, this is my bodyguard. Axl Rose has 10 big, huge, 400 pound guys. I have it. Pepper you, juice. Do you carry a gun? What kind and why? M16, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Colt, Colt, Colt 45. Because. <laughs> Colt I swear, I don't have a gun. <laughs> I, I keep it in my teepee when we go out in the woods and sleep. Do you? Yeah. Uh, you never know what's hmm. going to happen out there. Do you think that images of guns and violence in media and popular culture have contributed to the rise in violence? Yeah, I think so. Teens? I think so. I think Sir Mix-a-Lot standing in front of his exotic car collection holding two handguns and sending out a message like hey look at all these cars look at all this jewelry look at all these guns cool daddy-o or whatever and I, th I think that was really irresponsible of him to do that do you think there's that nothing romantic about guns they're a tool and they're in this world in this country things have just degenerated so much it's just like you have to protect yourself because there's a lot of jerks out there when I went to the gun shop to buy the guns you should have seen the people in there buying this. This guy was looking at this. I guess I hate to judge people by their appearance, but I mean, there were some gangbangers in there just swooning over these nine millimeters. Oh man, check that out! They're going crazy. It's like God. I was in there, and Ernie and I were in there, just like, whoa, what are we doing in here? But we felt like we had a duty to be in there and, and protect our families and homes and stuff. And these guys were, it was just a novelty to them. Like, yeah, you got to have a gun. You know, it's, it's scary. That kind of mentality. You know. Do you think that, um, th therefore, that like artists or creative um, people should have more of a, res a responsibility to to not glorify violence in their work, or is there some? I mean, well, if you have any common sense, you won't glorify violence, yeah. or you won't, you know, dwell There's nothing on wrong it. with raising the issue of violence, but glorifying it, no. yeah. They're they're just their irresponsibility. It's just like I don't know, just a lack of a lack of responsibility. They don't. Really think about it too much. They're just like they're wrapped up in that whole romanticism of guns and hey, it's cool, you know. Maybe it's a male thing, you know. The the ultimate empowerment, you know, ultimate man thing, gun. I have to admit, it really is kind of fun to shoot guns. When I go out to the shooting range, it's it's an enjoyable sport. Yeah, I like to do it. Yeah, it's cool. It's fun. I mean, and it's, <laughs> it's a responsibility to know your gun too. You just shouldn't have it. I mean, you should really respect it. Oh yeah, it. if you if you buy a gun to protect yourself, and 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 you don't know how to shoot it, you don't practice. You're not gonna you're not gonna hit the person if they're this close to you. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and another thing is like I'm not a member of the NRA. I don't want to join the NRA. I don't agree with the NRA. A lot of things the NRA says, you know. I just have my own reasons. Right. I'm done. All right. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Um, Bruce? Who's that dude? Who's that dude? Who's that dude? Julie. Do I embarrass you? Apparently, Chris. You're going to do some promo for him to be here? Oh, yeah. I got to write that out. I haven't even looked at it yet. Can I do that? Wait. Also, um, some promos for one mm. and an alternative nation, and if you want to do.